There's plenty of characters people want playable from Banjo and Kazooie, Shovel Knight and Wonder Red to King K. Rool, Isaac and the Inklings. But those characters each have a big following. What I'm here to show off are the underrated characters that I think need more love as potential playable fighters. And now that Cloud is in, almost any character is possible if there's enough fan demand or they're a gaming icon. And with the reveal of the Switch getting Wii U ports with new content, there may be a chance for more ballot characters to emerge without having to wait for Smash 5. Now, on to the characters! Way. Yeah, I know, this technically isn't his latest model, Ray Mark III, but I like this design better. Even if his latest design was even better stylistically. When looking for potential characters, one thing you have to consider is their moveset. Do they have enough attacks in their games to pull from, and is there enough variety? This is what makes RPG, adventure, and action characters perfect for Smash Brothers, because they both have the quantity and variety to make an interesting, well-rounded character. That's why Ray would be perfect for Smash. The whole premise of Custom Robo are customizable robots fighting in an arena. Of course they're going to have a big pool of moves to choose from. Like Mega Man, Ray has a ton of missiles, guns, and bombs he could use as moves, though I don't have an idea of what specific ones he should use. He would have plenty of weapons like Mega Man, have the height and weight of Samus, and be a better mix of physical and weapon-based attacks than either of them. I would like them to make an exception for him and change his arms and legs to coincide with the moves you choose, but that's probably pushing it. Same goes for different robos as costumes a la the Koopalings, but he has plenty of character swaps across the games to use his costumes as well. Raymon. Yeah, you heard me, Raymon. I'll talk about Agumon after. Now, before you cry foul and call me an idiot, I realize it's probably not gonna happen. But it's also not impossible given that Namco, who's developing Smash Brothers, also owns the rights to Digimon. So it's not like they have to reach out and start a dialogue for the first time, they're already working with them on a daily basis. And no, the fact that he's appeared in other fighting games doesn't matter, that didn't stop Sonic, Mega Man, and Ryu from appearing. Greymon would be a slower, heavyweight dinosaur with strong attacks similar to Ike or the melee version of Bowser. He would use projectile fireballs, biting claw, tail, and head bashing attacks, and for his final smash he would warp Digivolve into War Greymon. As for some of his moves, he could use Yoshi's old running dash attack, tail attacks from Charizard, Nova Blast for his neutral special, Melee Bowser's side special, his down special could also be Firehorn, a charged attack like Ice side special, his up special could be like the Me Gunners, where he shoots a projectile on the ground to propel him upwards. Or, he crouches down and propels himself upwards by flicking his head back for another horn attack. Also, Smash Brothers is just built better than the Rumble Arena series. Sorry to say it. And since November, Digimon has started to release a six-part film series called Digimon Try, where the original cast is returning, which would be a perfect time for his debut in Smash. If Mario can have his rival, why not Pikachu? And if Sakurai can make Pac-Man a fighter and actually fun, I don't think he'd have a problem differentiating Greymon from the other dinosaurs and dragons. I don't think one more dinosaur would really hurt if we can have, oh, I don't know, 12 sword fighters? And three to four of them are clones already. You can't even fit them all in eight player Smash, what the heck? Agumon! Now let's talk about Agumon. Briefly. If there was a Digimon coming to Smash Brothers, it would be Agumon for sure, as he's the title's character. Sorry, Vmon, Giumon, Agunimon, and Shoutmon, you're all just posers. But Vmon is clearly the best. I personally think Greymon would be cooler and have more to work with given his horns and long tail, but I guess they could pull a Giga Bowser and give me both anyway. Agumon! Pitcher Ball! Two? Like Greymon, Agumon would have a bunch of headbutt, fire, claw, and biting attacks, but on a smaller scale. As far as handling goes, he'd be as short and heavy as Mega Man, but around the strength of Bowser. Next up is a cute little cleaning robot whose household items make him a perfect fit for the wacky world of Smash Brothers. What? Roll? I said him, I'm talking about TV Robo! He could whip around his plug like he does in the new game, and in his final smash he could call Giga Robo and smash the stage with his feet. Which I didn't even realize I stole from the guys over at McLeod Gaming in Smash Flash 2. 
They've done a pretty good job at adapting Chibi Robo, although I think Sakurai could include a few more items in his new set. His costumes would be the suits he collects in the game. I think he has less of a chance appearing simply because he's not a big recognizable character. Regardless, I think he has that oddball charm you find in retro characters like Game & Watch, Rob, and Dakai. And no, he would not be the same as Rob or Mega Man. Are you trying to say all robots are the same? What are you, some kind of robo-racist? I realize this next character isn't a fighting game, but so is Ryu and he got in, so eat me. Amaterasu! Unlike Wolf Link, this other canine character actually has some interesting things to pull off. Besides biting and tackling, of course, Amaterasu could use her weapons such as the Reflector, Rosaries, and Glade. Her down special could be holding up the Reflector, but instead of reflecting since it doesn't actually do that in the game, it could act as a shield that protects you from the direction you're facing, but there would be a cooldown time before she could use it again. The other big aspect to her character is the Celestial Brush. In Smash, you wouldn't see the brush itself, but you'd see the strokes guiding the attacks. Her side smash would be the Power Slash, down smash could put down a cherry bomb on either sides of her, and her up smash could send a bolt of lightning in front of her. It would be similar to Palutena's up smash, but instead of knocking them back it would stun them in place, even in the air. Although it would be cast out further ahead of her, and could be used as a defensive move to put some space between her and the opponent. I love this Zelda series, and Hyrule Warriors has shown people there's more than just the standard Link Zelda Ganon combo that could be cool, playable characters. There's Darunia and Princess Rudo and Midna, but one character I think that would be great that doesn't get a lot of love is. <laughs> Vati! Vati would be the size of Toon Link and have a variety of magic and wind attacks. He doesn't have a ton of iconic moves, but I think that's what makes him interesting. He's basically a clean slate that you could build from the ground up like Captain Falcon. Just pick a theme to base his moves around, in this case Magic and Win, and go nuts with it. <laughs> his up special could be similar to Meta Knight's teleporting dimensional cape, but instead of ending with a strong attack when you hold down the special button, it could lean to a grab for you to either jab or throw and lean to a combo. His down special could pull enemies in towards him to set up for a combo, with his side smash being a multi-hit wind attack that pushes people away. His dodge moves could even have him split into a bunch of bats before returning back to his main form. His final smash would either be one of two forms, his wrath form, where he use both the analog sticks to move his arms and hit opponents like Master Giant, or his reborn form that restricts him to two to three new moves like Mega Charizard. You know, I think I'm forgetting one last character. And his name is Lal Cena! <laughs> and those are my favorite underrated Smash Ballot characters. Follow me for weekly updates and teasers every Sunday under the hashtag Weekly Sneak Peek. I'm hoping to have a Pokemon video to coincide with Sun and Moon's launch next month. And why not check out Post Mesmeric's channel where he talks in depth about game design? Here's a teaser on one of his videos I enjoyed about the game Catherine. It sounds like mere symbolism, but Catherine's gameplay draws out many of the same emotive pressures that Vincent experiences as a character. On a development level, it's a matter of understanding what factors impact the difficulty of the tower climbing gameplay, and using those factors to produce a certain kind of effect from the player. Thanks for watching. Remember, have fun and keep smashing!